Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of Dev Drawer. Today we're going to be going over how to cheaply and quickly install a uh, Linux server that you can use for development on a VirtualBox machine on Windows. Um, so my setup here that I use uh, with my development machine is uh, I used to have a computer that I converted into a Linux machine, but with the computer you have to worry about computer parts. So I actually made everything virtual. Um, so I took my computer that I had had that was running my Linux machine, I duplicated it and stored it off somewhere, and then I started a new installation using Ubuntu. You can use any flavor that you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, the, the steps are all pretty much the same for the entire process, but I actually migrated over to a Samsung solid state external hard drive it's 500 gigs, it's very fast, um, and it's portable. So I don't, I'm not limited to just having my server at the office anymore. Um, previously, if something was coming, you know, bad weather or something like that, and I had to get out of the town, I had to bring my computer with me, uh, my entire server with me, which becomes a hassle. But if you're doing local development on a smaller scale and you don't need like a full-fledged server room, um, having a solid state drive is the, I think, the best way to go because one, um, it's portable. Two, it's you know it's not really going to break because it's in a virtual environment. You can clone it, um, you can duplicate it, you can store it off on your regular computer or put it on another hard drive. Um, if your um, system ever crashes, like your computer crashes, you can just buy a new computer, hook it up again, install VirtualBox, and you have your server all back. Um, if you get hacked, then you can go in there and just um, take one of the clones that you've done and just blow away the old one, restart it, and now you're back to where you were. As long as you keep up with, um, you know, copying your your system over, duplicating your files on a regular basis, uh, which is pretty easy to do in VirtualBox. So right now I'm going to be going over how to install VirtualBox on a solid state drive. Um, in the next video I'm going to be going over how to um, install LAMP, uh, so Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, so you can have a full-fledged server. Um, so if you want to see that video, uh, like and subscribe to this channel. Um, I usually have new videos come out once a week. Um, so that's going to be our next one after this one is live. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing you need to do is go to virtualbox.org. It is a free application. You can download it over here. And just keep in mind, um, whichever version you download um, that is specific to your computer, if you're using a AMD computer or using an Intel computer, they operate differently in VirtualBox. Like for example, um, Hyper-V doesn't really work with AMD. You have to kind of set up your BIOS in order to get it working. And the only reason why I know that is because I have an AMD custom built computer. It's very fast, it's very good, processor, everything's great. But whenever I first went to go run my VirtualBox installation, I couldn't actually complete everything because the uh, the hypervisor wouldn't let me uh, it wouldn't let me um, run any of the um, the virtualization that uh, it was looking for but uh, it was an easy fix and I'll go over that a little bit later once we get past uh, the installation of the uh, Ubuntu server so first you download based on whatever um, uh, operating system that you're using I already have it downloaded so I'm not going to download it again um, and then once you get done with that um, we're using Ubuntu uh, the server version of Ubuntu, so a completely GUI-less uh, Ubuntu, uh, which I would recommend if you're setting this up for a development server, um, and it's free as well. But you can you replicate most of these steps using any flavor of um, Linux, like Mint or Red Hat or you know any of the larger ones. Uh, we just prefer Ubuntu because that's the one that I've used pretty much since it was first created. So in the ubuntu.com page you go to download and then you make sure you download the ubuntu server that's going to download an iso onto your box um, that you're going to be able to install into your virtual box uh, setup so for right now i'm going to get out of the browser because we no longer need the browser so we're going to be inside of the virtual box uh, setup so when you get it all installed you'll see a window that looks very similar to this one and it's just basically the virtual box um, uh, system administration part um, and keep in mind the virtual box is a completely 
well, semi-separated system from your Windows or Mac or another Linux installation. Um, whenever you create a server in here, it's got its own rules and parameters and login and all this kind of stuff. So it's it's a basically a virtual computer inside of your computer. Um, so that's just keep that in mind that that's what VirtualBox is. is. It gives you the ability to create multiple computers that you can run from one machine. Um, so whenever you want to build a new machine, you come up here to Machine and then hit New. And then that'll bring you to another window that um, allows you to create uh, name the operating system, uh, which y'all cannot see because it is inside of an outside uh, outside of the box. So hold on just a second, and let me see if I can capture this window. All right, there we go. So let's do that. And I'm going to take this and put it right in the center. Uh, let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see what we're doing here. Okay, so from here, you're just going to name your virtual box. So I'm just going to call it dev drawer uh, VR. No, not VR. Let's just say dev drawer dev. Um, so here, the machine folder is where you would select your external solid state drive. Um, just by clicking the down arrow and then going to other and then you would browse out to that solid state drive which again y'all can't see because it's in a different window but I'm not going to select the solid state drive because I'm currently using it for my actual development machine but the solid state drive that you have that's where you would select it at um, and whenever you're setting up your operating system um, here there's it's going to give you it's going to ask you questions about what you want to set up the hard drive the memory and all of this is based on your system configuration currently my system is pretty powerful um, it has I don't know 120 gigs of RAM or so and then the solid state that I'm using is a 500 gig solid state um, you can get bigger you can get larger um, I chose a 500 solid state drive because it was uh, one of the cheaper models but it's also a Samsung brand so it was good for the price um, but let's, I think I'm just dragging on for this, but let's go ahead and continue into the operating system and building this Ubuntu server. Um, so just keep in mind that in the machine folder, that's where you would just select the solid state drive that you've purchased um, in order to get this to work for you. Uh, I'm going to leave it as the default, which is the virtual machines folder on my user folder. Um, here, you would select Linux. And then you would select whichever flavor that you got. We have the Ubuntu 64-bit. And then you hit next. Um, so it recommends a uh, memory size of 1024. As you can see here, I have a lot of memory available. Um, if you don't have a lot of memory available, I wouldn't give it half of your memory if you're going to be running it as a development server. Um, so maybe 2 gigs would be sufficient if you have 8 gigs. If you have 16 gigs, maybe 4 gigs would be good. If your computer is pretty powerful, then you can pretty much set it at whatever you want to. So I'm just going to type 8,000 over here just to um, give me close to or right at 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, but you can make this whatever it is. I just wouldn't make it more than what your computer can physically handle because you are also going to be running Windows at the same time or Mac or whatever it is at the same time that you're running this virtual server and it'll make your computer experience much slower. Alright, so I'm going to hit next on this. And then it's just going to ask you to create a virtual hard drive. It says, um, you know, the recommended size of the hard disk is 10 gigs. If you're running this as a dev server, um, 10 gigs is definitely not going to be enough. So I think 10 gigs is for you to kind of play around with it. But if you have a 500 gig solid state drive, which you can see a link in the description to the exact one that I bought. Um, if you have one like that, I set it up so mine is 250 gigs. That is being used for the server just so it gives me some extra storage space in case I want to create another server or something like that. But mine is using 250 gigs out of the 500. So definitely don't use 10 gigs because you're going to run out of space very quickly if you do the amount of websites that I do. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create a virtual hard disk now. And then we're going to set it up as a virtual hard disk. You can choose uh, virtual box disk image. 
which is a VDI file or a VHD file, is kind of up to your preference. Um, I personally use virtual hard disk just because I like to know exactly where it's at. Uh, the VDI makes it where you can use the virtual box um, image that you're creating on other virtualization systems. Uh, VHD and uh, VMDK uh, make it a little bit more difficult, um, but for what we're doing in this tutorial, VHD is going to be good enough for what we need. So I'm going to hit next here. And then you have to make a choice between dynamically allocated hard drive space or a fixed size. So the difference between the two is that dynamically allocated is faster whenever you're creating the system, whereas fixed is slower. In the future, fixed is better because it uh, you set a certain uh, you know 250 gigs of space is what you're going to have it. If you ever need to upgrade that, you can essentially just go in there and edit your box and uh, give it more. You know, give it the rest of the 500 if you want to. Um, if you do dynamically allocate it, it uh, like I said, it, it runs a little bit faster whenever you're creating the system. It doesn't have to, you know, create as many files or folders, and it's a lot faster. But the dynamically allocated is kind of a hard number. So whenever you create a dynamically allocated, and let's say you wanted to do 250 gigs, uh, whenever you get to that 250 gig threshold and you need to get more, you actually have to do a lot more steps um, to modify that hard drive. Um, it only uses the amount of space that it uh, that it requires. So if you're installing this on your desktop and you only have 500 gigs on your desktop and you don't want to max it out, you can set it to a limit and dynamically allocate it. But since we're going to be installing it from an external hard drive specifically for this purpose, we can control it a lot better. Um, so we're going to create a fixed sized hard drive just in case you ever wanted to upgrade it later you won't have to go through all the steps to be able to upgrade the dynamically allocated. Um, and then here you would do 250 gigs or however many gigs you want to give it. I'm going to just do 30 since this is, I'm creating the server specifically for this video. It's not something I'm going to use on a regular basis. Um, 30 gigs should be more than sufficient for the tutorials I'm going to be doing on this box. Um, but you would make this as high as you would like it to go. So we're going to go ahead and create this. Um, and it takes a little while to do it. My computer is pretty fast, so it only takes takes 13 seconds. But depending on the speed of your computer, you may have to um, um, you may have to wait a little bit longer. And I know y'all can't see the little thing moving across the screen right now since it popped up in a different window, but it's essentially a little green bar that moves across all the way to 100%. And then it brings you to this screen. So I'm going to. Um, close out of this window capture because I am no longer using this and it's making it look weird. So as you can see here we have the server that we just created um, and then all of the information about that server is contained here. So if you look at your start uh, arrow uh, start arrow here there's a down arrow next to it. So if you click on this down arrow it brings you to uh, you can't see it because it's popping up in a different window but Ah, this is going to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, but you have three options, normal start, headless start, and detachable start. So whenever you're first installing the system, using the normal start um, is the best way to do it because you get to see everything as it's happening. If you Once you get it installed and you want to run it on your system without it kind of taking up an icon in your task uh, bar at the bottom, uh, you can run it in headless start, which it will still be running your server. It just won't be visible unless you're inside of the virtual box manager so there won't be an icon that you have to constantly keep open you don't have to move it off to the side it's just running in the background no matter what and um, once you want to get into it you can open up your virtual box machine or open up a command prompt or a powershell or a terminal and ssh into it or use the normal start uh, so that you can actually view it so we're going to click on normal start for now and it's going to start this box for us um, actually, you know what? Before we do that, let me uh, cancel out of this because I forgot to tell you how to put the operating system on it. So before you start it, so let's go back a little bit, rewind, and you're going to go to settings. And then at, inside of your settings, you're going to go to the storage. And then on this first controller that's currently empty, you're going to click on this, the empty part. And then you're going to click on the 
Uh, hold on, let me start this over because once again it popped up in a different window that y'all cannot see. So hold on just a second and I'm going to go to my window capture and there we go. Alright, so now we have this pop up. Let me make it a little bit bigger for you and move it. Okay, so inside of this you have, you click on storage and then once you're in storage you're going to click on this empty CD-ROM looking uh, icon and it's going to bring up this optical drive so this is where you're going to browse out to the folder that you um, that you downloaded the ISO into for the Linux installation so we're going to click on this and you can't see what I'm doing right now but um, I'm basically just browsing out to my downloads folder and I'm double clicking on the Ubuntu live server download that I did um, and then only thing you need to do is hit OK and now um, let me close out of this again the window capture let's just close out of that and then now we're gonna click on the start again and it's going to pop up in a new window so I got to turn that on for y'all here and there we go okay alright so uh, inside of this window this is the GUI-less um, Ubuntu server so it's just going through it's a command line so we're going to exit out of these two because we don't need to worry about those right now it's generating our um, public and private keys it's bringing up the server um, so that we can install it so now we're going to get to this screen and we're going to go through the following steps so we're going to hit English or whatever language um, that you want to do and then we're going to hit done on this um, currently the only hard drive that exists on this box is the virtual hard drive so you don't have to worry about blowing away anything that you have so we're just going to hit done uh, we don't need a proxy address if you need one then you can put one in here but we're just going to continue without it um, and then we're going to hit done again we're going to use the entire disk because this this hard drive is specifically set up for this purpose and then we're going to hit done one more time after verifying everything that we're doing and as you can see at the top um, our mount point is 29.997 gigs that's because we set our virtual hard drive to be at 30 gigs yours would say 250 or whatever number that you set there and then we're going to hit done and selecting continue will begin the installation process so we're going to hit continue and then we're going to uh, put in some information so we're going to say my name is dev drawer and actually I'm going to make this a little bit easier for me when I go to use it and then the server name we're going to name this dev drawer And this information here, uh, put in whatever you want that you can remember because this is what you're going to use to SSH into the machine um, down the road. So for right now, we're just going to do dev drawer and password. It is a very weak password. Please do not set up your server password using the word password. Set it to something that you can remember uh, because even though it is a virtual server, whenever we get done setting up um, LAMP and everything on it, it will be semi-publicly accessible and depending on your network configuration, it may be 100% publicly accessible. So what you don't want to have is the ability for someone to be able to um, get into your server from outside of your network. So just don't use password. Um, this is a temporary box for me so it's not going to be something that I'm worried about because I'm setting it up right now um, but you need to worry about that if it's going to be your full development machine that's running at all times um, so again do not use password as your password and let's hit done and go ahead and install OpenSSH um, just because we're going to be using SSH um, once we get done installing the server we're going to be using it to install the rest of the stuff that we need to in the next tutorial um, so we don't have any identities that we want to import and we're going to hit done there and you can go through this list and install uh, any other additional services that you want to have on there 
Um, some of those, um, if you you know if you use any kind of containers or anything like that, um, you might want to install the Kata containers. Uh, there's some other stuff in there that you might want to install, but we're going to install the LAMP server using a um, apt git command um, in the next video. So we're not going to install anything additional to this. Now, the installation of this could take up to about 20 minutes or so. So for right now, I'm going to pause the recording on the video and I'll start it back up whenever it gets to the very end so I can show you what the next options and the next steps are. So I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, so it's not quite done, but what it's doing on this step right here is it says it's downloading and installing security updates, which I do recommend because it is a fresh install, so you want to make sure everything's completely done. It doesn't take too long, as you just saw. Um, but once you get to that point, you can you can just skip it and reboot it, or you can reboot the machine after it gets done, which is where we're currently at right now. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot the machine by hitting Enter. And what's probably going to happen here is it's going to tell me obviously that it failed to unmount the CD-ROM so that's fine um, if that happens to you which it probably will because it's trying to, to um, do that uh, installation media again uh, you could theoretically just go to your machine and uh, close out of it and power it off because once you power it off you can go back into your um, into your uh, virtual box manager and then you go to settings and just undo what we did previously which is the storage um, hold on let me show y'all this box again there we go so you just go back to storage and then okay it unmounted it for me uh, but sometimes you can go in here and you just make this empty again so um, I'm going to restart the server now and see how that works. So it took me a little while to get this screen to pop back up, but this is it now. So again, we can close out of these messages. And let me zoom in a little bit more for y'all. Okay, all right, so now the server should be fully functional. Um, once it gets over there, we should be able to SSH into it by figuring out what the IP address is and then use the command prompt from now on. Um, so I don't think that we need to have our virtual box manager open any longer so I'm probably fixing to close out of that and running into a do a headless start with it uh, but I just want to make sure that the server powers on before we get to that part okay so it finally got done doing the boot it would had to load some um, of the uh, RSA uh, keys and stuff like that so it took a little while on the first one uh, it shouldn't take that long on the next one which I'll show you guys in just a minute um, but one, one thing I want to show you is uh, this screen right here that you can see in the middle of the uh, the video and then over here for this preview they reflect each other so whenever we go into the headless start in just a second I'll show you what it does and it goes through the entire routine um, you'll see the screen over here updating and it's going to reflect exactly what you see on the um, the virtual box itself so over here um, I'm gonna go ahead and log into it so dev drawer and then the password was password um, so now that I'm in it um, I'm going to uh, reboot it just to kind of show you a way that you can um, that you can kind of see how everything happens without me having to close the window and then I'll get into the headless uh, version of it. So we're going to go to uh, just type in sudo. I don't even think I have to do sudo, but let's do it anyway. Alright, so now it's rebooting the VirtualBox machine. You can see it goes back to the VirtualBox screen and then this is what it'll typically do whenever you're loading it up for the first time or the second time. The first time it had to install those RSA keys and stuff like that so it took a little bit longer but obviously that was a lot quicker than the five or so minutes that I had to wait for the first boot for it. Um, so again, let's log in.
and we're back over here so right now I'm gonna do I'm, I'm gonna shut it down and then we're going to start uh, running SSH so first let me do IP ADDR to show the IP address uh, it did not find it is it IP ADDR I think it's IP ADDR Google uh, let's see View IP address. Uh, okay, I have done that so many times. How come it is not working? Um, let's try the if config. Hmm. All right. Let's do sudo apt install net tools. And let that install. All right, so let's try that command again. All right, there we go. I mean, that's not the way that I normally do it, but that way it works. Oh. <laughs> I put IP with the no space in between. It's IP space ADDR okay so um, alright so the IP address that we are currently pulling on this is 10.0.2.15 um, so I'm going to open up the uh, command prompt which I'm going to minimize this minimize this okay so now you should be able to see the command prompt window here and I'm just going to ping it from the command prompt just to make sure that I can hit it. So 10.0.2.15. Hmm. Quest timed out. Okay, so let's try this then. SSH my username at 10.0.2.15. Okay, am I not seeing the right IP address? 10.0.2.15 is the IP address. out of that for a second okay so now I need to see why this thing is not uh, let me look at my settings for the box and I might have to do something with the network so let's do I'm going to bridge the network with my Wi-Fi I mean it should be able to get out because it just did an update so IP ADDR and okay let's try that one so let's do ping 192.168.0.33. There we go. All right, so now it's hitting it. So the issue was, and I'll show you in just a second. So let me get rid of this for a second and see if I can open this back up. All right, so on this, on the machine drop down, which of course you can't see, I'm just going to open up the settings. And then I'm going to capture that window again here, enlarge here. Okay, so on the network panel, the default network is attached to uh, a NAT address. So I changed it over to bridge adapter and then I just connected it to my Wi-Fi that's currently running to my desktop that I'm doing this on. Um, that way it bridges to connection so I can actually uh, use the internet and get out um, so you might have to do that as well that's why I have my other server uh, my actual server working as well uh, bridging the adapter so what we're gonna do right now uh, for the end of this video is I'm just going to um, use the command prompt to SSH into the box 
Um, so let me get rid of this for now and we're going to use the command prompt to SSH into that IP address that we just pinged and it should let us in so SSH dev drawer at the IP address that it gave us and now it's working and then I type in my password so now I am in the box um, as if I was running it through the virtual machine so right now I'm at the point where uh, we can start working on the next video which is going to be installing the LAMP server because I believe that we've probably been recording for 30-45 minutes already um, so one thing I want to show you before I completely get out of this is the headless mode so I'm gonna go back to our um, this window here and uh, inside of this if you click on file and then you click on close which you can't see but it's just one option so you hit close um, I'm gonna shut down the server and there's three options that it gives you save the machine state send the shutdown signal uh, or power off the machine uh, since we haven't done anything to it I'm just gonna go ahead and power off the machine so that way we are completely out of that now so I don't have to worry about switching back over to that window so let's get rid of this and now we're gonna go back into our VM which you can see that it says that it's currently turned off and now we're going to click on this down arrow and the option that you can't see your normal start headless start detachable start we're gonna run it as a headless start so that way that I don't have to keep this virtual box window open anymore but as you can see from the little icon over here it's showing you exactly what it's doing so as soon as it gets to the part where it stops and it's expecting a login um, I think that's where I'm going to end this video um, so if you like this video definitely hit the like button hit the notification bell so that you can be aware whenever I push out the next video where I actually teach you how to take what you currently have and install a LAMP server on it and install virtual manager management and stuff like this so it's gonna be a pretty cool little video that kinda gets the whole web dev side of it up and working uh, but for now I think that this is it um, so thank you for joining me uh, don't forget like and subscribe and I'll see you next time